Hello again, everybody. It's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch in Far West Texas, which by now, everybody, if you've watched any of my videos, everybody says he starts out that way every time. Well, you never know who's new, uh, so I start out that way every time. It's my shtick, if you would. Today, this is long overdue. Today I'm going to finish telling you about the Duck Pond and Fountain. I did a teaser about it a while back, and it took me this long to finish it. Now, I'm sitting in front of the bird bath. This is not the duck pond, this is the bird bath. We needed a bird bath. The people that I worked for um, before I retired sold these beautiful uh, veined limestone rocks that they made fountains out of. Uh, I got this one right straight from our supplier and built my own little... Um, it was supposed to be just a bird bath because running water attracts more birds than bird seed, so it was a bird bath. Well, the ducks took it over for a while, and I decided that we needed to build them their pond. There were some unique challenges in building their pond, and I'm going to show you and tell you about it right now. So hang in there. Here we go. Well, if you can see me and hear me, here we are at the duck pond. It's finished. It's running. We're going to go a little bit closer on it in a minute or two. Um, my runner ducks, all five of them are in there, the Muscovy ducks, one's in there, and some, several are sitting outside. But this is the duck pond. We're in the middle of the desert, so it's all the bigger I could make it, but uh, this will just have to do for them. A lot of challenges that come with building um, this particular duck pond, and one of them is, but is obscuring me right here. It's this four by four. Why is it here? Why is the pond the shape that it's in? Why is it where it is? Well, let's get into that from behind the camera and I'll give you a little bit of a tour of it and the challenges I faced, how we overcame them and uh, for those of you that would like to have a duck pond but find that they get too nasty, they're just full of duck crap and blech all the time, let's, uh, let me show you how I overcame that. So then the first question is going to be why is the duck pond where it is? Why is the fountain the shape that it's in? And let, uh, let me get over here and give you some perspective. This is the uh, chicken coop, uh, what will be the chicken coop when I finally get a roof on it, and I'm still trying to get the money together for that. You can see the wall coming. The wall would come all the way up here, and then meet this wall, which juts out just a little bit because the doorway is going to go right here. This is actually the corner of the greenhouse. So this edge right here is the corner of the greenhouse. And it also lines up with, now this, this 4x4 is just holding up the pipe for the moment. But it lines up with these uh, 4x4s here that support mo much of the roof. And the roof, of course, is going to come, come right out this way. I've run my electrical, as you can see, on the inside so that it will be out of sight. My electrical comes out to um, the corner of the greenhouse because this 5,000 5, square foot greenhouse uh, is going to go from this corner to that corner there with the rusty pipe to here and out to that last pipe right there. So I had to try to incorporate everything in that. Also, as we come back around here, Right where that white rooster's walking is where the French doors for our dining room are going to be. So our view from the dining room, let's walk over there, our view from the dining room would be roughly looking out here. Now part of this is going to be a wall right here for the greenhouse. Chickens will mill around here, but mostly they'll be in their yard. But the view is going to be that way. So if you're going to have a view that way, you're going to have a duck pond, you might as well make it something that's attractive to look at from the house. Which is why the wall is here made out of masonry, and why the fountain is here. The fountain is a step fountain. It's got the falling water, which you can hear. Falling water comes down in the steps. I arranged for it to pool right there, and it was a good thing I did because the wild birds love to land there. Then it falls into the main pond, which is deepest at that funny-shaped uh, angle in the corner there, which is also where the pump is. 
Now, the pump, it's easy to pull out. It's down here, of course we can't see it because they get in here and the water's always running. Runs up to a weatherproof plug. The, we the weatherproof plug just gives me a way to unplug the pump if I need to. And also another live plug, let's show you. Here, this is always, always live. This one down here is operated by the dawn to dusk sensor. And I said that real slowly because you can't find a dawn to dusk sensor anywhere. So what we've got is the electric runs up, runs past the security light to the dawn to dusk, uh, to the dusk to dawn sensor. Now, the dawn, dusk to dawn sensor, for those of you that have had the same problem I have finding a dawn to dusk sensor, this dusk to dawn light sensor is normally closed. When the sunlight hits it, it opens and that cuts the circuit. So what you need to do is you need to reverse that somehow. So I found a relay online that gave me both a normally open and a normally closed circuit. So you apply power to the relay and you also are power applying power from the dawn to dusk sense, uh, excuse me, the dusk to dawn sensor to it so that uh, the sensor operates just like it's supposed to operate. But on one leg, you get a dusk to dawn circuit that's, that uh, provides power, and on the other one you get a dawn to dusk uh, leg that provides power. Very difficult to do. It wasn't that expensive. It was just took a lot of engineering, and if anybody finds a, a sensor, a light sensor that r will run from dawn to dusk, please let me know and send me the link. But that's what powers the pump. Now then you come back down here, and you can see the light security light turning on. We have a motion sensor that wires up to a 200 watt LED light. Now that floodlight lights up the entire, what's going to be the chicken yard at night. We've had problems with coyotes coming in close. I really can't tell you if they've gotten any of our chickens because we don't count our chickens. I'm sure they have. And this light on the motion sensor should stop some of that. So that's, what's, uh, that, that's what is there. Now, the other thing is, how do you get the water to where you want your pump and filter? So the water, the pump has to come up, and the, the, the longer the run is, the more weight the pump has to push. So the pump and the, and the rise had to be right here. That's why the 4x4 is there. But the 4x4 is going to be incorporated into the main structure of the building, so it won't be that obvious. But the water pumps up there. There will always be a slight downhill angle going to the end, and we'll show you the end in a second. But this 2x6 is going to end up at the same height as the 2x8 there that's going to run the uh, stringers for the roof. Now, getting back to the filthy, filthy ducks. Ducks will crap and pee and mate and do everything in the world in their water. The water gets filthy. So what do you do? My solution was to take a 60 gallon drum. Now this 60 gallon drum has, and I'm gonna hold this up, hopefully you folks can see it. It has, of course, like all 60 gallon drums, it has, or 55s even, it has an in and out, two vents. One's got a funky thread, one's got a normal thread. Um, the fitting for the funky thread to make it watertight is like 22, 24 bucks to buy. And I got that because it had to be watertight. So what happens is, the water comes through the black pipe, um, well actually through the white pipe and then converts to the black pipe and goes in here. This drum is, what are they, four feet tall, three and a half feet tall. It goes in the top, then it creates pressure and the pressure forces it out the top into the fountain here that I made and I just drilled a bunch of holes in a, in a one inch PVC and then set that uh, piece of limestone there gave me my waterfall effect. So the water comes in the top, comes out the top, but in the meantime it comes in with some force so it swirls around in here. Heavy sediments in the water immediately settle to the bottom. 
Now this is where I found a way to deal with the duck crap. The heavy sediments settle to the bottom. In the bottom of the tank, I put another watertight fitting. The fitting comes out here and splits into two. Now it splits into two uh, because there are times that I'm going to want to drain the entire thing. And if I want to drain the entire thing, I can drain it right straight into my gray water tank by throwing this valve up to drain into my gray water system. If I'm just going to drain it every two or three days, I just want to get the duck crap out. Duck crap's great fertilizer. So you throw the valve, throw the valve, all right. The valve's pretty hard, it takes two hands. Throw the valve. Now, we have water coming out through this line that will be buried out here past the Muscovy ducks. to our vetiver grass hedge. Now at the vetiver grass hedge, this nasty water full of fertilizer and duck crap, you can just see, I can smell it, you can just see that mucky water coming out. That's what was in the bottom of that tank. It comes out here and it runs along the vetiver hedge, which is, um, this was my experiment that did work, so we're going to continue with the vetiver and terrace this entire arroyo, clean it up and terrace it with vetiver all the way down on this side only. And the water for it, the water for the entire vetiver um, terrace, or terraced arroyo is going to come in here and then it'll seep from this one to the next terrace, the next terrace, and the next terrace. But that is the way to utilize that duck crap so now we've run, oh, all you have to do is run five or six gallons out of here. So we've run our five or six gallons out, and we want to close the valve. And then now the pump will pump up and fill this. It probably ran down to here, and it'll, it'll fill it back up and start running the fountain again. So the fountain keeps the water going. In fact, the fountain's still going. The fountain keeps the water flowing. The, the flowing water has this heavy sediment drop out of it. And then periodically, as the um, urea in the, uh, in the duck crap builds up ammonia in the water, I do have to drain it. And at that point, I drain it both into the gray water system and then down into the, down into the vetiveers. That takes, care of the, um, that takes care of cleaning the fountain, which is one of your biggest, or the, the pond, rather, which is one of your biggest problems when you have ducks. Ducks don't need water. They just like water and they're fun to watch in water. So by putting them here, this was kind of cool. We put the corner of the um, building as part of the uh, structure. And that is all there is about this. It was all, oh, I, and not all, it was all done out of masonry. I had some greenhouse, um, greenhouse plastic. In other words, the plastic that doesn't break down when it's on the top of a hoop greenhouse. I had a lot of that and I did four layers of that on the bottom of this that I carefully dug out. Put those four layers down, then built up with the rock and then just did a very careful mortar mix. Two or three um, layers of mortar here to seal it up. The same thing up here to seal these up, the steps. And then we actually turned the water on on each and every step as I finished it. I would turn the water on and let it come down. And I took a steel brush and just knocked the edges down until I had an even flow. And that's how we ended up with that even flow. The whole thing runs off of one 75 watt pump, which supposedly moves something on the neighborhood of a thousand gallons uh, an hour but with the head like this going up nine feet, it doesn't move that much. But you see we get plenty of water movement. So that's it. And that is our newest project, the duck pond and the, uh, uh, the fountain. Uh, the fountain itself is uh, 96 inches high. And it was a lot of fun to build. It did take me nearly a month to complete the whole thing. A lot of that was just because I had to wait to, for things to dry or for parts to come. Like the pump took me a long time to get. But that's it. And as, as with a, a lot of my videos lately, I, you'll see some edit marks where I've cut out stuff that just wasted time. But I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or any interest or anything I can help with, please let me know. And remember, 
Uh, there is that donate button up there that can help me to continue this work and move a little bit faster so I can make more videos and educate more people on how to live in an eco ecological way at an eco ranch. And from the eco ranch out here in West Texas, it's Robert Earl. Bye for now, guys.